All right, Joe here, welcome back to We Need To Talk. As you can see, self-isolation has hit me pretty hard. I'm not gonna lie, I think I've gone insane sat indoors every single day. The fish need a clean, don't they? Jenny, Jeffrey and Kenny are their real names. I just called them Jenny. I've lost it. I bought a bucket hat for PSG because I need to feel like it's gonna be festival season at some stage. These sunglasses are basically because the ring light is so blinding, I can't see. Someone send some help. But we are here to talk about football, aren't we? We're here to talk about football over the past seven days. The seven days that has also seen Teo Hernandez losing the plot. A seven days that have proved Harry Winks doesn't know how to make a cuppa. Water in first. In what world? And this lad have an absolute nightmare trying to do the stay at home challenge. Anyway, this week we need to talk about Manchester City. Before we get into it, the ring light is actually so bright, it is actually causing me visual problems. I'm seeing circles all over the screen, so I've had to put the sunglasses back on my face. And yes, I know last week's Football Manager video did hit 5,000 views, didn't it? Thank you very much, everybody that watched that. So we will try and bring some Football Manager content over the next few weeks. If you've got any ideas about what form that could take, what Football Manager content you want to see, let me know in the comments below. Let's get on to the football though, because it's been another pretty quiet week. Rightly so, all of football is pretty much paused for much more important stuff that's going on in the world right now. But one headline did catch my eye, and it involves Manchester City. I'm sure you guys will remember, it was only a month ago, it seems about six months ago, that back in February, the citizens, Man City, were banned from the Champions League for two whole years and fined 30 million euros by UEFA. Now, if you remember that, you'll also remember that Man City hit back pretty fast, didn't they? They released a statement saying, simply put, this is a case initiated by UEFA, prosecuted by UEFA and judged by UEFA. Easy for you to say. With this judicial process now over, the club will pursue an impartial judgment as quickly as possible and will therefore, in the first instance, commence proceedings with the Court of Arbitration for Sport, aka CAS. Well, last week, CAS actually revealed that no proceedings in any cases, including the likes of Manchester City versus UEFA, will be held until at least May the 1st because of this coronavirus lockdown. And to be honest with you, even that date looks pretty optimistic. When the Swiss court actually shut down, they had already postponed three major hearings and had another 16 cases scheduled, all of which didn't include City versus UEFA. So the date May the 1st now seems pretty unlikely. In fact, the most crucial date, June the 23rd, even seems pretty unlikely at this current stage. June the 23rd is crucial because that is the date which UEFA has earmarked right now as the first qualifying round for next season's Champions League, meaning the Champions League for 2020-2021 will have commenced on June the 23rd. Now that delay could end up working for Manchester City because whilst the appeal process takes place, it could also mean that the ban is effectively frozen and that would allow them to play in the Champions League next season whilst this case is with Cass. Although I think it is worth pointing out at this stage that all of this is on the predication that June the 23rd is the date next season's Champions League restarts, which I think is not going to happen, let's be honest. And Manchester City clearly think the same as there's been plenty of reports this week that Man City themselves don't think a freeze will take place. Nevertheless, with the Court of Arbitration for Sport confirming that all of these cases are getting pushed back and delayed, plenty of Premier League clubs, Manchester City's biggest rivals, what did I do with my hands there? Man City's biggest rivals are not too happy. That's because the Mail Sport revealed exclusively this week that eight of the current top 10 in the Premier League have launched a joint bid attempting to stop City playing in the Champions League whilst this ban is at the appeal stage. I mean, the only two clubs that aren't in the eight are obviously Man City and Sheffield United. Now, I don't know why Sheffield United have sided with City. If you do, let me know in the comments below. But, but, but why? 
The group, which includes Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Leicester, you name them, they're there, Wolves, they're all in there. They've all written separately, but to one law firm. And that law firm has then written an application up and sent that over to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, according to the Daily Mail. The Mail's inside source told them, the feeling is that enough is enough. For too long, City have been able to get away with breaching the rules at the expense of at least one other club that has been unable to get into the Champions League. The fear is they'll be able to delay any punishment and, should they then win the appeal, get off totally scot-free, which would be outrageous. While City at this stage have declined to comment, the Express have come out and said that Manchester City feel that the top clubs are leading a charge against them. Apparently, they've been left very shocked, is the phrase, by Liverpool in particular's involvement uh, in all of the group to keep them out of the Champions League. At this stage, this story is still rumbling and bumbling. I'll be honest, we didn't have too much to cover, but I just thought this was quite interesting. The top clubs trying to keep Man City out of the Champions League. Moving on to the good, the bad and the ugly. We're not doing any bad and ugly at the moment because, to be honest with you, there is enough misery in the world. So here's some good news stories from around football. In the past seven days, we've seen Cristiano Ronaldo and Jorge Mendes form together and donate one million euros towards the building of an intensive care unit at a Portuguese hospital. We've seen Lionel Messi and Pep Guardiola form together and donate two million euros to hospitals in Spain and Argentina. Wilfred Zaha owns a property company and has opened 50 homes in London to NHS workers and staff who can then go and stay there for absolutely nothing. We've seen Andy Robertson give a massive donation to a Glaswegian food bank that's allowed them to buy 53,000 meals. We've seen Toby Alderweireld delivering the following message. Hi everyone. I hope everyone is, is following the, the, the government measures to, to stop the further spread of the coronavirus. Um, the virus creates many needs, uh, especially the, the lack of personal contact. Um, the people are, uh, are sick, they, can, they can't see their friends, their family and stuff like this. Um, so um, my plan is to buy dozens of, of tablets. Uh, to, to give to the hospitals and nursery homes uh, so people can um, video chat with, the, with their loved ones and their friends to, to get through this tough period. Um, I'm gonna, in the next couple of days and weeks, I'm trying to get those tablets to the, to the, the places uh, where they can help. Um, I hope anyone who can spare or can give or something um, that they can do to, to, to help a little bit people in need to, to still see the, the families and friends because that will help, uh, that will help a lot. Uh, we stay together strong. We've seen Paul Pogba trebling a UNICEF fund that's allowed people to go out and buy 330,000 pairs of gloves, 3,000 masks and 10,000 goggles. We've seen Kasper Schmeichel donate £20,000 to Age UK who have launched a COVID care initiative in Leicester. And we've also seen clubs galore across Europe taking pay cuts, the likes of Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, Leipzig, all giving massive amounts of money to help fund the smaller teams in the league. It's brilliant to see good news stories coming out of such a shocking crisis. So that's it for this episode of We Need To Talk. I know, I look ridiculous. I'm sat in my front room. I'll be honest with you. I'm just trying to stay positive right now. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit like and go and watch the content on EFD. I don't even know what's going out today. We also do this show every single day on Snapchat. So you can click the link in the description below to go and watch that. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.